To make the most of outdoor living, every home should have a patio. You can use them to relax, socialise, entertain, even dine al fresco. Today we will show you how to lay a basic square patio using Bradstone Old Town. Along the way, I'll show you which tools and materials you'll need, so it might be a good idea to have a pen and paper handy. Before we start any digging or mixing, the first job is to dry lay the patio, a simple job of laying out the paving as you want the finished patio to be. This lets you check the size and layout, and most importantly, that you have enough pavers for the job. Right, let's get going. As with all paving jobs, the key to a sound patio is a good foundation, and there are three critical factors that we need to consider. 1. The firm foundation that will give us a stable patio area. 2. Adequate drainage to ensure any surface water drains away and doesn't remain on the paving. And 3. That the finished paving is at least 150mm below the damp-proof course if you're laying next to a house. The Bradstone Old Town paving slabs we'll be using for this patio are roughly 40mm thick and these will be laid on a full mortar bed that is roughly 35mm thick. There will also be a 75mm thick base, so all of this gives a total paving thickness of 150mm. To allow for this, plus the 150mm, we need to stay below the damp proof course, which means that our dig level should be at least 300mm below this. To create the firm foundation for the patio area, we use a concrete mix comprising six parts of all-in-one ballast, a kind of pre-mixed sand and gravel material, with one part cement. We mix the all-in-one ballast and cement together dry, ensuring the cement is evenly distributed throughout, before adding just enough water to dampen the mix. You don't need a wet concrete, just damp enough so that it binds together. Now we spread the mixture over the area, level it out using a shovel and then tamp it down using a length of timber, a compactor or your feet. This foundation needs to have a slope to ensure the paving will drain. For example, this patio will be 3 metres in width. We'll use a typical patio crossfall of 1 in 60, which means 1 centimetre of slope or fall for every 60 centimetres of width. So, a 3 metre wide patio will need 5 centimetres or 50 millimetres of full. We recommend laying paving slabs on a full mortar bed. Use a 6 to 1 mix, so that's 6 parts of sharp, gritty sand to 1 part cement, mixed together with just enough water to make it damp and workable. Now we're ready to lay the pavers. We first set up taut string lines to guide both alignment and level of the flagstones as we lay them. We need two lines, one running up and down along the length of the patio and a second line running side to side across the width of the patio. If you're laying against a wall, you can use that to align the paving. Remember, at least one of the line guides should incorporate the fall or slope to ensure the patio will drain properly. When laying the flagstones, we always start in one corner of the area to be paved and work our way outwards from there. So in the corner, we want to spread out the mortar so that it covers an area slightly larger than the flagstone we want to lay. We then ruffle the surface of the mortar to make sure there's some give to it when we tap down the flagstone. Lower the paving slab onto the mortar bed, careful not to get mortar on the edges. Now tap it down. Imagine two diagonal lines running across the paving slab. Hit the paver firmly but not too hard at a point that is roughly midway between the centre of the paving slab and the corner along those imaginary diagonals. Start in one corner and move around the paving, tapping in succession until the flag settles down to the correct level. You also need to check to ensure that you have a fall on the paving so that water won't sit on its surface. Check the paving is firm and not rocking. The joint between the paving slabs should be 10 millimetres. That's just wide enough to insert your little finger. Now we have two paving slabs down, we'll check them with the long spirit level to see that there's no high point or hollow between them and that the fall we need for drainage is still present. Once we're happy, we press on, preparing a bed, placing a paving slab, 
settling it down to level, checking the joint width and checking the surface levels to maintain an even profile and a regular fall, repeating the process until the whole area is covered. When it's all been laid, the patio should be left for around 24 hours or so to allow the bedding mortar to harden. So now the patio is all laid, it's time to give it a quick sweep down before we start on the pointing. We need to make a 3 to 1 mix using a soft building sand to give us a smooth finish to the joints. We mix it slowly, adding a little water at a time to get a smooth consistency and adding a plasticizer which makes the mortar easier to work with. Remember that wet mortar, like any cement based product, can burn exposed skin, so make sure you're wearing suitable protective gloves and it's a good idea to have long sleeves to protect your arms as well. When you've mixed the mortar, simply trowel it into the joints, pressing it down and smoothing over using a pointing bar if necessary. Take care to avoid any mortar going onto the surface of the paving slab. Any surplus mortar can be scraped off, but it's often best to leave these bits for a few hours until the mortar started to harden and can be removed with less risk of it staining the paving surface. And so, here we have the completed patio. At the start of the video I said I'd run through the tools you'll need. These are a shovel, a rubber mallet, a string line, a spirit level and a pointing trowel. Remember to also have a pair of gloves to wear when you're using mortar. So there we have it, job done. Now don't forget these four tips for success. Always dry lay the patio first to ensure that you've checked your measurements. Create a good solid foundation and check your depths. Always lay the patio from a corner and work outwards. And always check your levels and fall frequently to make sure you stay on track. Of course you may want to pass the whole project on to a Bradstone Assured installer like me. And I'm sure there's one in your area so just check our website to find out more. Now whichever way you choose, whether you do it yourself or call in a professional, one thing is for certain, the result will be stunning. Goodbye and thanks for watching.